In this guide, you're going to learn how to develop your new electronic hardware product. Hi, I'm John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs. In this guide, I'm going to break down the process into three parts. The first part, is I'm going to review the various uh, strategies for developing your product. In the second part, we'll focus on the steps to design the electronics. And then finally, in part three, we'll go over how to develop the enclosure for your product. So let's first look at the various strategies for developing your product. The first strategy is to develop the product yourself. Um, this is rarely a viable option uh, entirely on its own since uh, so many various skills are required to develop a product. The second strategy is to fill any gaps in your own technical knowledge by bringing on technical co-founders. Uh, bringing on co-founders has a lot of advantages and disadvantages, which I'll discuss in detail in this guide. Your, your third option is to outsource development to freelance engineers. Um, this can sometimes be combined with the other strategies uh, to fill in any gaps in your own uh, technical skills. But in general, just be aware that if, you're, if you are going the freelance engineer route, that most likely you're going to need more than one engineer and you're going to be responsible for managing the various engineers to make sure that all the pieces eventually uh, come together uh, in your final product. Another strategy that's similar is to outsource uh, to a development firm. Um, th this can be nice because you have all the engineers and all the resources under one roof. Uh, the, the downside in most cases is the, the high price that they charge. Uh, and finally, the fifth strategy is to partner with the manufacturer that uh, already manufactures a product similar to your own. And then in part two, we're going to focus on developing the electronics. The first step when developing the electronics is to start with a preliminary production design. This will allow you to focus on the big picture for your product. Um, you can you know, select all the critical production components and estimate the production cost and determine the manufacturing feasibility. These are all steps that should be covered under your preliminary production design phase. After you uh, have the preliminary production design complete, the next step is to develop the schematic circuit diagram. This can be thought of as uh, essentially like a blueprint for a house. It's a conceptual drawing that uh, represents the electronics design. A schematic diagram next has to be converted into a real-world printed circuit board layout. Ultimately, a printed circuit board is what you will have prototyped. Uh, once you've completed the schematic and the and typically also the printed circuit board layout, you will uh, use your the same software that was used for the schematic and the PCB layout to generate a bill of materials. This bill of materials will list every component part number um, for each of these components that's required to to build your your finished uh, printed circuit board. Once you have all those steps done, now it's time to order the, the printed circuit board prototypes. Once you get the prototypes back, now you begin to, uh, you have to test the boards, uh, most likely program them. Uh, almost, you know, by far the large majority of products will require some type of microprocessor or microcontroller that requires programming. Um, this will be done typically uh, simultaneously with testing and debug. Um, almost any design will have a few problems initially, uh, so those have to be uh, corrected, and then you uh, repeat the process again. And then finally, step seven is to have your, your product certified. Uh, electrical, electronic products require uh, various levels of certification uh, in order to sell your product. This isn't technically part of the development process, but ultimately it is if you want to bring your product to market. Next, in part three, we're going to focus on the enclosure for your product. The first step is you're going to want to have a 3D model of your product's enclosure created. From that 3D model, you can then order prototypes or in some cases, uh, perhaps uh, buy your own 3D printer to make it to uh, create your own prototypes. Once you get those prototypes back, you'll need to evaluate the enclosures. 
uh, prototypes and most likely uh, make some changes for the next revision. It, it's it's pretty much unheard of to get any design, whether that be the electronics or the enclosure, uh, absolutely perfect the first time. Um, pretty much any type of design uh, is going to require some iteration on the prototypes to be able to get the final production version ready. And then finally, at once you've got your your prototype, you know, pretty close to what you are looking for, you need to now transition your 3D model uh, to make it uh, compatible with uh, high pressure injection molding. For prototyping, you typically will use 3D printing technology, which has the capability of pretty much producing any product that you can dream of. Whereas uh, once you go to mass manufacturing, injection molding will be used to produce your enclosure. And there are, are very strict rules on uh, what can be done with injection molding. So you will need to make sure that you have someone on your team that understands the limitations of injection molding and how to modify your 3D model of your enclosure so that it can be feasibly manufactured. Okay, so that's a quick summary of what we will be covering in this guide on how to develop your new electronic hardware product. I'm John Teal with Predictable Designs. Thanks for listening, and I hope you find this guide helpful.